Hey guys, what's up? Nikki once again. I'm super excited to do a full unboxing and quick overview of the Pow Kitty X55 handheld gaming console. So let's get right into it. So essentially what this is, no, it's not a Steam Deck replacement or anything like that, even though the design does kind of resemble the Steam Deck, but clearly it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit smaller. As you can see, the Steam Deck kind of dwarfs this thing. No, what this device is essentially, it's, a, it's an emulator. So I don't know necessarily off the bat if it comes with any games pre-installed, we'll definitely be checking that out. But if not, what this can do is you can emulate any type of game onto this device from the original GBA all the way up to the Nintendo GameCube and so on and so forth. There's a lot of things you can do with this that I'm very excited to try out and to see what the system can support and play properly uh, with its current configuration. So looking at the specifications, this has a ton of mumbo jumbo here. So it's, I'm gonna go through it pretty quickly. And if you're not really into the whole tech space, this may not make sense to you and you can definitely skip ahead if needed. But this has a 5.5 inch IPS RGB display. So relatively good display and it is 720p resolution. So not super HD, but for a 5.5 inch, that is more than good enough. It has a Rockchip RK3566 quad core ARM Cortex A55 CPU with a clock speed of 1.8 gigahertz. It has a RAM Mali 652 GPU with two gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And it, this is the 64 gigabyte variant, but it can be upgradable up to 256 with a micro SD card. It also has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and it says it takes about two hours to charge fully and it should last about four hours of gameplay. So, which isn't too bad, but I would like to have seen it last at least six hours of gameplay, especially these aren't like AAA titles or anything it's trying to run, but we'll see if that is for sure, you know, an actual use, if we can make it last longer than four hours. It does charge via USB type C, which is really cool to see. It has an HDMI out, which is really nice to see and a 3.5 millimeter standard headphone jack. So you can plug in a headset to this or headphones to use for better stereo audio instead of using the speakers that are built in. So going around the box here, we have the model number X55 on the front, quick design of the device itself. Going to the top, it shows what the top of the device looks like. We have the standard R1, R2, L1, L2 buttons, power switch, a host button. I'm curious what that port essentially is for. It has the HDMI port, of course, the DC, which I'm assuming is USB-C, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a reset switch. Um, not really sure how often you'd have to use this. I'm assuming that's a, like if the device freezes for some reason, it is cool they have a built-in quick little reset. Nothing on the back. Again, some more specifications on the left side here. And then here's on the bottom, we have two speakers, card slot, two different card slots, so TF1 and TF2 because apparently this does support a double TF card to expand up to 256 gigabytes. So that's pretty sweet actually that it has two different micro SD card slots. So let's the, slide this top off here and see what's inside the box. We have a little foam protector, which is pretty cool with the little cutouts here for the console itself. And this is the blue variant, I believe. I think they have different colors on their website. I could be wrong about that. And there she is. And I'm actually pleasantly surprised it's not super light. I was expecting this to be super duper light because of its size, but it feels quite substantial in the hand. I'm not going to lie. And it's not like overly heavy or anything, but it feels good. Buttons feel pretty decent as well. I mean, the actual quality of the buttons don't look super premium. These almost look 3D printed in a way, but the actu actuation actually isn't bad at all. It has a good give, nice feedback as well. Analogs, honestly, these feel like they're straight out of like a joystick from a Nintendo Switch. I'm not gonna lie, they feel exactly the same as a Nintendo Switch joystick. So that's not bad at all, but hopefully there's no stick drift or anything like that. The D-pad is really solid. I've, I'd actually even say that's, uh, hold on, I think that's better than the D-pad we have on the Steam Deck. So Steam Deck is pretty mushy. I've never been a huge fan of the D-pad on the Steam Deck. Yeah, this one actually feels a little better. It's a little bit more tactile. It's still a bit on the mushy side for my liking, but it is better. It does feel better, and I think that's gonna be really good. Those old classic like Mario games, stuff like that. Start and select. Ooh, very tactile. You can probably hear that. Very tactile feedback, which feels really good. And then we got volume up and volume down. Kind of, <laughs> kind of interesting. The volume up is on the left side. I'm usually it's the opposite. Volume down, volume up. But yeah. 
and then start on this side, also tactile. The analogs both click down as well. Looks like we have an LED light there. Going to the bottom, we have these speakers on both sides. We have the two slots here for the SD. It looks like there's already SD cards in there. Just uh, let's see if we can pop one out. I think you just click in there, I would assume. Yep, there we go. Yep, just a typical little SD card, 64 gigabyte. If I can get that to focus. There we go. Put that back in. And the other one as well. And they are two different types of cards here. So this is a 16 gigabyte, it looks like. Yep, 16 gigabytes. And the other one is a 64 gigabyte. So that's I think that's just to kind of show that this can support different sized memory cards. They don't have to be the exact same, which is really nice, actually. That's pretty cool. And moving to the top of the device. So it still says host, and they lo it looks like they're both USB-C ports. So I don't really know the difference there. Uh, maybe there isn't. Maybe they just want to name them differently and look cool. But we'll test those out to see what they do. And then we got the buttons on top. Now these look like triggers, but they're buttons. They're not triggers, sadly. But they do have a nice rounded feel to them. Feels more comfortable in the hand. But yeah, they're just they're very tactical, but they do not have actual like trigger actuation, which is kind of a bummer power button there and the reset switch headphone jack everything that we've already stated so let's see what else is in the box so we have the instruction manual here let's see here it's kind of like a quick startup guide looks like most of it's in Chinese maybe English is on this side yep there we go tells you a little bit more about it some inspections low battery video output it is cool though that it has a mini HDMI so you can plug it right into a television. That's pretty dope. A lot of stuff like that you have to get adapters for. So that's cool. That's built right into the device. And you do get a little USB-C to USB-A cable. At least they include that so you can charge it, which is nice. And that's pretty much it for the box or the unboxing experience. And before we power this guy on, I should say that I do have a link in the description below if you would like to check this out for yourself. This is going for $139.99 US. So it is a little bit on the steeper side for a handheld portable emulation device, but we're gonna get into the mumbo jumbo of it to see how easy is it to install ROMs on this device and does it already have emulators built in? I'm really curious to see how it looks and how the actual system looks. This is running off a custom version of Linux. So in essence, it should be the same as doing any type of emulation, like on the Steam Deck, for instance, which was super easy. So if it is that easy and the games run right pretty well and the controls feel good, I could recommend it. But I can't say that for sure quite yet. So with that, let's see if it has any power with it. So Power Kitty it is a very interesting name. I wonder where they came up with that. It does have a green LED indicating that it's on. I'm curious if that changes depending on the uh, amount of battery power you have. So this did take a little bit of time to boot up. I'd say like a solid 30 seconds. All right, and we're right in already. There's it. There is games on here. Uh, I'm gonna turn down the music. So we do we do have an interface there for the music. That gets pretty loud. We'll turn that off for right now, but those speakers actually get quite loud. They're a little bit on the tinny side, not super bassy. So it looks like it's based off the actual console right off the bat. So we got Game Boy Color, Advance, DS, Genesis, Game Gear, Dreamcast, Naomi, Neo Geo, PlayStation, PSP, all games, favorites. Some of these I've never even heard of. Setup. PC Engine, Nintendo, GameCube, or Game Boy, 64, and there we go. Okay. What is, I'm curious what the, uh, what is this PC Engine? What is this? Go to manufacturer. Oh, here we go. So I don't know if these are like PC specific games, like if they are meant to be on PC, I'm not really 100% sure. It's also nice to see that this came pre like fully charged. We're at 98% right off the box. That's cool to see. I don't know any of those games, but let's see uh, what kind of well, PlayStation games are in here. We got Castlevania, Crash Bandicoot, all three of the, wow. Crash Team Racing, Gran Turismo, GTA 2. They got a lot of games on here right out of the bat, which is really cool. Resident Evil. Two, three, Road Rash, Spider-Man. 
it twist the metal in here? Nah, no twist the metal. Man. I'll have to see if we can put our own custom ROMs on this device. I don't know if you can. I'm, I was just saying that the being like, maybe you can, but let's just try one off the bat just to see how it runs. We'll go into Crash Bandicoot 2 uh, just to see how fast it boots, how well it plays, how good it looks in the display, kind of all the above. And, a and basically, my whole reason is to see, is it worth paying $140 for this device when you could save up the money and get a portable gaming device like the Steam Deck and put your own games on there with emulators? You know, of course, it's more money. You're paying $400 plus, but you can do a lot more with the Steam Deck. So let's see how this goes. I will turn the volume up a little bit for this one. Oh, wrong way. So, so far, it seems pretty good. It's a very bright screen, very uh, pretty. New game. Okay, so now it's switched to the PlayStation controls, so X is down here. All right, so we're in the game. Analog support, which is nice. We also have D-pad support, of course. Feels responsive. The controls feel good. Uh, we'll just go into snow go, I guess. Use the analog. So it looks like this game is not, well, I don't know. If, I don't know what the aspect ratio of this display is. I think it's 16 by 10, kind of like the Steam Deck. So when you're playing 16 by 9 games like this, you're gonna get those black bars. Thankfully, they're not they're not noticeable, you know, unless you're really looking for it, like I am. But you do lose a little bit of that screen real estate, sadly. But overall, the game is running great. Not seeing like any drops in performance or frame droppage. Now, I don't know if this system has any type of like FPS counter you can turn on. There isn't like a menu button of any sort that I could find on the device. So I might have to go back to the main menu to look at any settings like that. I'm trying, I'm so bad at this <laughs> game. The ice, the, I've always been terrible with the ice physics in, in Crash 2. So essentially the price you're paying for here, you know, you're getting really good controls here. You're getting a pretty decent display. Um, battery life could be a little better, but at least based off what they show on the paper. But you're paying for them to have the already pre-installed emulating games, uh, which there, as you can see, there was hundreds. I think there, I think on their website it says there's 10,000 games on here, which is just insane to me. So that is pretty cool, though. You don't have to worry about doing it yourself. But of course, you can't pick and choose the games. They're on there, and you get what you get. So we're going to see if I can put my own games on here, if it'll let you emulate games like that. I have no idea, but I'm excited to try and see if we can do that. I also want to see, um, is there like a menu button? Like, is there a way I can get back to the main menu? Maybe that's what the reset button's for. Let me, let me see. What does the reset button do? It literally just kills it. It restarts the console. Okay. So maybe that's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> um, it is interesting though. There's no like menu button like to go back to the paint menu. So maybe, yeah, maybe it's just, that's what you're supposed to do. Whenever you're done with the game, you hit the reset button and just kind of restart from scratch. All right, so start as a menu, navigation bar, random, choose. All right, so again, we're turn the music off. So we got controller, oh, that's right. So this does have Bluetooth built in, so you can connect a blue, I don't know if you can connect a Bluetooth headset for audio, but you can control uh, connect controllers to it, which is really cool. So emul X settings. Let's see what this is. Video mode 720p, 60 hertz. Enable Bluetooth. Start at boot. Emulation station. Here we go. Show retro arc FPS. We're gonna turn that on. Show boot. Randomize boot video. Alt YouTube search word. Interesting. Go back. All right. Game setting, oops, wrong button. Game settings, uh, game aspect ratio, six by nine. Okay, here we go. So maybe this is where you have to change this. Force the game to render in this for aspect ratio. So I'm assuming the screen is 16 by 10 because that's the same as the Steam Deck. So I'm gonna force the games to run in that so we don't have those black bars anymore. We have the bilinear filtering, which is cool. Enable RA bezels, max performance. So it's nice they do give you these options here as well for the emulation so you can if you if you are noticing a game having some issues you can come in here and mess with some of this stuff which is kind of cool to see power saving mode user interface mode bright here we go i was looking actually for the brightness because so it wasn't even at max brightness 
So you can go pretty low with this. You can see there's still a little bit of a backlight to save on battery life, or you can go all the way up. I gotta say, this is a pretty bright display. It's a little bit, it's got a little bit of glare issues. You can see reflections on it pretty easily. So if you're out and about, you might have some issues with the reflections, but I gotta say the actual screen looks really good. It doesn't feel like it's a really like terrible display, like it's pixelated or nothing. Let's try out one more game before we jump into trying to emulate ourselves. Is there any PSP games? Assassin's Creed, flat out head on. That's a great one. Grand Theft Auto, both Vice City Stories and Chinatown Wars, amazing games. NBA 2K13, WWE Smackdown. They got some great games on here. I'm not gonna lie. I just wish they had Twisted Metal. Um, let's try flat out. That's one of my favorite PSP games. So that actually booted up pretty quickly for a PSP game. See if we can skip the opening sequence here. I mean, it seems like it's loading pretty easily. I'm not really noticing any lag or nothing, which is cool. Yeah, the display looks good. Like, <laughs> I know I've said that before, but that it, the display really does look good. All right, getting a little bit of frame droppage here. And I'm also, I turned, I turned on the uh, FPS counter, but it's not showing now. So I don't know if that's just for specific games or something. But yeah, this is clearly running in like 30 FPS, maybe lower than that. It's hard to say, but it's it's a little bit behind too with its input. You can see like when I try to turn, see how laggy that is. So in this game, I would I honestly would argue it's probably not playable. Um, I mean, you're not gonna really have a good time with it. Like it's playable, clearly it launches and everything, but with a racing game. I mean, having that that bad of input delay, it's just not really worth it, in my opinion. But I am surprised to see a game uh, with this much graphical fidelity to be running this well on this device. I really am. I, I figured this would be like PS1 era and below. You know, the fact that this can run PS2 games, essentially, and PSP games, um, that that's a testament. That really is. So that's, that's impressive. So the fact that this is running at all is a feat in its own. Now... Again, if you're using a device like the Steam Deck, this game runs flawlessly on the Steam Deck. I have this exact game on there with an emulator and it runs great at 60 FPS. But that's a much powerful, more powerful device. Way more expensive. So it kind of get what you pay for, right? So if you're looking for an emulation device that will emulate any device of the classics, you know, all the game consoles that I showed at the beginning through when I was going through the main menu, those games should run just fine. But if you're going for a little bit higher fidelity gate graphics, you know, anything Eh, kind of past like the 2003 era you gonna you're probably gonna run into issues like this where there's gonna be a little bit input delay there's gonna be some frame droppage for sure uh is it unplayable not necessarily but it's pretty bad it's i i wouldn't recommend it so yeah kind of a bummer the other thing too it's a little bit of a bummer there's no like stick there's no menu button there's no way to get back to the menu quick you kind of just have to kill the game it looks like um, let's see, is there a way to just exit out of the game and feel like go back to the home screen possibly? Cause I don't want to have to just reset the device every time I want to go back to the home screen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Save states. Oh, okay. I think I figured it out. I, th I think I figured it out. Wait. Uh, so if you click into the analog. Here we go. So you can have different save states. This is your memory card. And then you can actually go right into your settings from here. Here we go. Okay, so you might even be able to make this game run better uh, with the emulation settings. So simulate block transfer effects, frame skipping, auto skip, frame skip, force max FPS, low helps. Okay, so let's do auto. And let's see if this actually helps our performance a little bit. So right now we don't have VSync on. Hardware transform, software skimming. I'm so glad I found this because I was about to write it off as being like, yeah, these games, you know, they might not run that well, but the fact that you can actually come in here and edit all these tools in the actual emulator is really cool. So here we go. So faster memory, unstable. Interesting. It's on by default. All right. Well, well we unlocked it from 30 FPS. I'm, I'm really curious now. Uh, to see if it'll run a little bit better. I also want to see, is there a way I can turn on an FPS, like, counter? Show FPS counter. There we are. So we'll do FPS. 
Let's just see what happens when we have it now with unlocked FPS. That looks pretty cool. So now we can see the FPS counter here. We got 17 FPS, 28, so it's below 30. So yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. But, again, the fact that you can go in there and actually edit with those settings, we possibly could get this running at a stable 30 FPS on this device. So, that is cool. I'm glad I found that. I was worried that there was no way to go to, like, to the main menu. You had to reset the device every time. So, yeah, that's all you gotta do. You just hit the little analog in, go over to... There's even cheats enabled in this, too, apparently. I don't know what those will do. Import from cheat.db, edit cheat file, enable disable cheats. So that's cool. But yeah, we're gonna exit the menu. See how easy this is. You resync games, homebrew, and demos. Exit. So that's just the PSP emulator. Okay, so it opens up the individual emulators systems when you do that. Okay. So yeah, I love this interface. It's super easy, it's intuitive, it's cool. It's like super quick. I don't see any lag within the actual menus or anything like that. Very neat. And again, it's all out of the box. I didn't have to do anything. So with that said, let me see if I can download some PS1 games in here just to give them a try. And uh, we'll see how easy it is. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, we're back. So I did plug this into my computer and it didn't work. I even tried both of the different USB-C ports here to see if it would connect directly to my computer. And that's just not the case. I looked it up and apparently there's a really common theme with these retro emulation devices. I guess is the best word for them. And it's just not the case. The main way you can connect these to your computer or to transfer your own files to them is by specifically removing the SD cards and putting them into a converter and then plugging them into your computer that way. So I did that. I took the SD card out, put it in a converter, connected to my computer, and I went over and I drag and dropped uh, two games. I just wanted to try just as, as an example, uh, Twisted Metal 3 and Twisted Metal 4. And as you can see, they show up here in the list now. It's Twisted Metal 3 and 4. However, when I try clicking on them, I'm not going to do it, but when I try clicking on them, it just goes to a black screen and then basically cr crashes. The only way to get out of it is thankfully to hit that little reset switch. So that's probably why that's there. So there's two things here that I learned. One is that, yes, you technically can plug this into your computer and put your own ROMs on it if you know what you're doing. I got to admit, I'm still relatively new to the whole emulation process. I didn't emulate before I got the Steam Deck. That was my first ever instance of emulation, and it was super easy because I was able to use Emu Deck, which pretty much does everything for you. This is a little bit more advanced past my grade level. So what I learned watching a quick little YouTube tutorial is you have to actually convert these files from bin files to a different type of file that all of these ones are already set to, and that's why they launch with this specific emulator. So that being said, is it possible if you know what you're doing? Yes, yeah, 100,000 percent. But if you're brand new to emulation, you don't know exactly what you're doing. You are going to be stuck with the games that come on the device. But that being said, the fact that this thing comes with 10,000 games pre-installed from like so many different uh, generations of consoles, it's kind of mind blowing to me, like just how many are in here out of the gate. And you could spend hours and hours and hours in here just messing with these old classic games. Now, the one thing to take away though is, as you saw before, even with the PSP game flat out head on, you may run into situations where certain games aren't gonna run the way that they used to, at least on the PSP or any of those higher, graf graphically higher games or consoles. Uh, you're just not gonna get that same performance on this guy because of the limited hardware. But for the most part, 99% of these games are gonna run just fine and you're gonna have a really good time doing it because this screen actually is, is still like, the more I look at it, the better it gets. The colors really pop on it. It almost feels like an OLED display. I don't believe that it is, but it really does look like an OLED display. It's very bright. This is max brightness, by the way. The only downside to the display is that it does have a pretty big glare. So if you are outside or if you're under like direct lighting, you may notice some of the reflection in there, which could, you know, hinder your gameplay experience. But for the most part, the, the screen is gorgeous. That's by far the best benefit of this retro gaming device. And on top of that, the controls are really good. I, I can't really say I have any complaints when it comes to the analog sticks or the D-pad. And the D-pad's actually the best part about it. It just feels really responsive. It doesn't feel very mushy to me. It, it's not tactile, tactile, but it does feel pretty good. And the, the buttons and the shoulder buttons all feel really good as well. 
and it, it's a really premium feeling device for a retro simulator device in a way, right? Emulator device. So the fact that it feels that good and it seems like it's made out of really high quality materials, I have to say I would give this thing a, a pass. I would definitely check it out if you're in the market for a retro emulation device. You're not looking to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars, you know, on a Steam Deck and to have to do everything yourself. This comes pre-installed with games ready to go. I'd say this is the one to look for. You're going to have a really good time with it. I love the screen. I love the feeling of it. And the fact that it comes with so many pre-installed games right off the bat is really nothing to gawk at whatsoever. I feel how many Game Boy Advance games are on here. That's just crazy. And the cool thing is, since it has all those built-in emulators, you do have the power to go in there and mess with the settings to have it the way that you want. Uh, instead of having it just, well, that's what you get and you got to deal with it sort of thing. So, And it's also a very easy and fluid interface. I got to commend them for that. It, it looks very polished. It doesn't lag at all. And it, tell, it even tells how many games are in each category before you jump in there. And like I said, if you want to jump into the emulation world and put your own games on here and go around and mess with all the files and whatnot, you can do that. You're not system locked from doing so. So there is that. And of course, you do have the HDMI out, which is pretty neat. So you can plug this into a television, like in your living room, and play all the old classics right from there. And you can connect a Bluetooth device to this to use it wirelessly. So essentially, you could, in the future, buy a docking device for this, put it on the dock, and then use a wireless controller. And you could play this from a distance on your big screen television. And I think it does upscale the 1080p. Don't give me, don't uh, quote me on that because I couldn't find it on the website. But I believe the HDMI port does upscale to uh, 1080p, which is cool to see. So with that, that is my full unboxing, first impressions, and quick overview of the Pow Kitty X55 handheld gaming console. Again, if you would like to check this out for yourself, I will have a link in the description below and go show them some love. They did send this to me specifically to make a video on it for you guys. So if you want to see more content like this in the in the near future, make sure to leave like, share, support, and go tell them that Nick sent you. And hopefully you guys check it out. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out. Hey guys, Nick here once again. And I just wanted to pop into the very end of the video to give a special shout out to my channel members. If you don't know what a channel member is, essentially these wonderful people are using their hard earned money to help keep the channel alive. So that's why I want to give a huge shout out to these guys because they're amazing. And if you want to become a member yourself, you can do it as easily just by clicking on a little join button below every single one of my uploads or just by going to my channel. There is four different tiers depending on how much you would like to support each month and you can join for as little as $2 a month. And trust me, even if it's $2, it helps a ton and it adds up at the end of the month so that I can get more games for you guys to review or make retrospective videos on or to buy new technology such as new computer parts or really anything to keep the channel afloat and to make more content for you guys. So with that, I want to thank Kenneth Fellows, Hull Healers, Boltworks and Restoration, Wade Lady, Vinny Severman, and Thrasher to Black Stallion. You guys are all amazing and thank you so much for all the wonderful support. This channel is just growing and growing every single day and I can't wait to see where this channel leads us. So with that, have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Peace.